Okay, so um, I think we've waited enough. So let's just start. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Favor Kubiru, and I'm an analyst in the secondary market at Apex Nigeria. And uh, today we are having this financial literacy session, and we will be unlocking the investment value in one of Nigeria's premier export commodities, which is cashew. So for a bit of context, this webinar um, focuses on the new cashew season. It applies the growth factors and potential for investors to invest in cashew and use this commodities market to boost profits and achieve financial independence. So with me on this webinar, we have two seasoned experts in the commodity space. Yusuf Ogunbi, who is head of sales operations at AFEX, and also Ismail Yaya from Marble Capital, he's an assets manager. And they'll be sharing their wealth of experience and also helping in answering all your burning questions. So just take full advantage of them being here because it might not happen again. Okay, so, um, while the session is going on, kindly make use of the Q&A section for your questions, and we'll be glad to answer all of them. So um, now, without much ado, I would, okay, so let me give you a rundown of the flow of this, of this session. So we'll start with, Ms. with Yusuf giving a talk about, he'll talk about the topic, explain everything from his point of view, and then we would then ask, then we'll enter the Q&A sessions where I'll um, ask our two panelists questions to drive our conversations further. And also you, and then I'll also ask the questions that you have dropped in the um, Q&A section on this webinar. So I guess we can start now. So Yusuf will speak. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, just give me a second. I guess. So I can't turn on my video. It's telling me the hosts um, okay. giving me an error here. But um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, nice to have all of you here joining us this afternoon to talk about the cashew market in Nigeria. Um, it's probably one of the most interesting markets in the country in terms of participation um, by um, market participants, the structure, um, the conduct, and the operations of all of these participants. Um, more interestingly, it's also one of those markets where we tie the trade relationship between Nigeria and export markets such as India, China, Vietnam, and a host of other countries as well. So cashew, as of today, is probably, in terms of agricultural exports, one of the top five, six commodities exported out of the country. And uh, majorly, the commodities go to the Asian markets, um, India and Vietnam, to be precise. And, um, more interestingly, this is also one of those commodities that Africa has a very strong hold. So you are talking about Nigeria, Benin Republic, Togo, Côte d'Ivoire, Tanzania, holding the largest share of the um, export market for these commodities. So this is one commodity where it's close to heart, and we are one of the largest producers in the world. I'm but sorry, then, like, can I interrupt you? Can you can turn on your uh, video now? Okay. 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 Fantastic. Can you see me? Properly? Hi. Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Okay, fantastic. Um, as we go ahead, if you have any question, just drop it, any comment um, at the end of the session, at the end of the conversation, we would be answering the questions. Okay. So, <clears throat> so back to what I was saying, um, like I said, Nigeria is one of the largest producers. Africa remains the top um, producer of this commodity, just like in the case of um, sesame and cocoa as well. 
But similar to those two commodities, um, Nigeria, the, 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 the cash market is also very poor when it comes to value addition. So when you look at it closely, you would see that the, the, the raw cashew nuts, which is what we export from Nigeria to India and Vietnam, are actually re-exported from these countries as in processed nuts, right? So if you go along the streets of Lagos, along the express in Abuja or any hold up basically, um, or any shop or any retail store beside you, beside your house, you can buy cashew nuts, those nuts in the bottle where that you can just eat. But that's literally what India and Vietnam exports. Um, while Nigeria, Tanzania, and the host of all other African countries export um, raw cashew nuts. When you then come domestically, so the question is which locations are most important for this commodity in the country? So you look at states like um, Oyo states, um, Oyo states, you look at Kwara states, Kogi states. Um, these, are the, these are some of the major states for producing cashew nuts in the country. Interestingly, Oyo state has some of the best quality raw cashew nuts in the country. And um, in terms of pricing, um, in terms of price attached to these commodities, um, buyers of raw cashew nuts in the country are mostly interested in the raw cashew nuts from Oyo state and then do the cashew nuts from Ogi and then from, um, from, from, from Kwara state. So that said, if I were any member of the audience today, the question I'll be asking myself is, okay, we now know about the production. We know about the countries we export to. We know the countries that buy these commodities. We know where we can get it in the country. But how does the price behave on a yearly basis, year to year, year after year? What happens? What we've seen is cashew also has some of the shortest window trading in the country, basically between um, February, February to May, basically. Um, the best cashew nut comes out by February, April, <laughs> February, March, April, and then May. Everything rounds up. By May, everybody has procured what they want to buy, and then there's literally no performance in the market again. So if I were an investor, I would look at cashew nuts as a way of um, taking advantage of my fund within a four, four to five month window um, where you are buying, you are coming in early in February, trying to see the appreciation you can see in the market between March and April. By May, you are pretty much done with that investment and you are moving on to other investments. Um, so that's the way I would look at it if I were an investor. So February, March, April, May, that's the window for cash. And what we see with prices is that if use this pattern as well. So prices go from in February, the it's just coming out. There's a lot of production in February. So prices are probably at their lowest in February and then they appreciate um, gradually over the course of the season. Um, last year, I think between February, April, February, March, and the first two weeks of April, Cashew did around 12 to 15% um, in, in just within that 60, 75 day span. And then if I were to analyze that, right, um, I'm looking at, um, if we use a 60-day average of 10%, and that's two months, right? You analyze that, you are looking at a 60% performance over the course of the year analyzed. Um, so basically, you're looking at a short window commodity here, unlike other commodities like maize, soya beans, paddy rice that you can actually do for a long period of time. You're looking at a very short window in the case of cashew. And then you are looking at price appreciation um, within that period, and then investors quickly exiting the market. Um, as with any other commodity that you are participating in in, um, in the country, you are majorly benefiting from price appreciation, capital appreciation. So I put in a hundred thousand naira, and I'm trying to see whether I can make a hundred and fifteen, a hundred and twenty thousand naira, basically 15, 20 percent out of it and then exiting the market. So it's a timing game, which means that investors that participate in this market will be very active investors. 
um, not passive investors. So you can't leave your investment and just go to sleep. Um, you in this kind of instrument, you buy the instrument, um, you buy the investment, and then you leverage um, the price appreciation, price movement um, on a daily, weekly basis, um, and then you exit the market. So um, that said, I think I'll just have a recap of all what I've said now. Basically, our uh, audience should know that, first of all, cashew is a short-term commodity that you trade within a four, three, four-month cycle. Um, price appreciation is the game. You are trying to leverage the movement in prices, take advantage of whatever opportunity come up in the market, and then you buy into these opportunities. And then lastly, um, <laughs> some of these production fundamentals that I mentioned earlier, um, you're looking at Oyo, um, Ogun, Kwara, Kogi as major producing states. And the greater, the, 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 the countries that buy the most from us are Vietnam and India. Um, so basically that's what I would, um, I would leave it at that. If anybody has any question, please feel free. Um, share your questions and would attempt to answer them. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. Thank you so much, Yusuf, for that explanation. I'm sure that our listeners have been clear from that. And uh, now we'll be moving to the Q&A part of this. So I will start with the, with the questions and then I will ask the questions that are on the Q&A section section. So please drop your questions in the Q&A section of this call. So I would start, I would ask um, Yusuf questions now, and then I would also ask Ismail questions to drive our conversations further. So um, I think the first question I have for Yusuf will be, um, what are the factors that drive the growth or price of uh, cashew in the fiscal market? And how is cashew price determined on the sport board? What are the things that determine the price of cashew on the sport board? So fundamentally, um, like we've said, um, fundamentally, you're looking at the demand and supply side of the market. Um, and cashew is not, um, doesn't play in isolation. It behaves like any other commodity in, in that sense. So you are looking at demand from the international market, which is the major driver of prices in the cashew space. So um, are participants in the international market very bullish on cashew? Are they buying a lot of cashew? What's the production like across these countries? So last year, production was kind of solid across these countries. When you look at Nigeria, Benin Republic, um, Cote d'Ivoire, Tanzania, production was solid. Um, it's looking like something like that this year too. We are not very sure. Early days to call a to make a very tangible call, but then when it comes to supplies to the supply side, we are looking at the 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 are, when it comes to the supply side. That's where you are looking at the production across these countries. When it comes to the demand side, you are looking at the international market. So that's major. But also because cashew is an export crop, the Naira dollar US, the Naira USD exchange rates also come into, 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 place, into play here. So you have people monitoring the, the, the exchange rate as well and trying to see if it's interesting to buy in Nigeria versus buying in Cote d'Ivoire versus buying in um, Tanzania and the likes. And that makes it even more interesting for country by country analysis. Um, the currency in Nigeria gives a lot of buyers, commodity buyers, the opportunity to come into Nigeria as we speak. Um, we've seen that for cocoa. We've seen that we are seeing that to some extent for cashew as well. So it gives them that opportunity. Um, and as a result, um, those are some of the drivers that you would expect to see in the market. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I have a question for Ismail now. Uh, so, from your knowledge as a as an asset manager, sorry, what are the likely potential returns based on historical performance of or forecast of cashew this season? So, what do you think our investors can gain from investing in this right now? 
All right, thank you, Fable. Um, I think Yusuf has um, list, um, shown that um, the year before, the performance of um, cash in was about 11%. I think last year, within that same window, about 14%. So if you're taking that on average, you expect a performance between 11 and um, 14% this year. That's um, been a bit conservative, right? Um, Given the um, the market now, and as Yusuf explained, that it's a very short it's a very short window. So it's only um, if you take advantage of it, you have, come, you have the potential of making about that uh, that returns. But again, I'd like to explain that you know the returns is you looking at the four month period, right? But within that four month period, just that um, the fluctuations, right? You could get maybe. 20, 25%, depending on um, how the transactions go. So I would advise investors to, like Yusuf said, it's it's you monitoring the market on a daily basis, right? Not just um, holding your um, positions till the end of the season. If you hold your positions to the end of the season, you might not necessarily make the gains you're looking for. <laughs> Within the period, right, you, you have a chance of earning more than that 14%, hopefully. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Ismail. Okay, so in the Q&A section now, there's a question from Toby Kolawoli, and I would actually assign that question to Yusuf. I think he's in a better position to answer that. So Toby's asking, aside Vietnam and, and India, how big is the market globally? So um, the question to ask, however, is, how big is the cashew nut market? The nut itself, that nut we consume. How big is that market globally? And if you observe the nut market, especially the nuts that the kind of nuts we have for cashew nuts, um, which is perceived to be more healthy, um, has been growing over the years, especially in, in Western countries, Europe, North America, which is the United States and Canada. Um, so that's where the bulk of the demand is coming from. So when you then look at that angle and the cons the consciousness to consume more healthy items um i think the market is expected to grow considerably into the future as we as we progress um interestingly on the flip side um the the hectare the total number the total amount of land that is cultivated for cashew globally is not increasing to match up with the demand so we are looking at at best you can have like 1% maximum growth in production uh, in production over a long period of time but then the demand is expected to grow beyond that um, as we move forward okay thank you Yusuf. toby i hope that that was able to answer your question um i have a question for a smile so do you think um the export value of cashew plays it um, plays a, um, a part in the way investors play in the cashew market and how does that affect the way, and, and how does it play a part in the way investors play in the market? Do you, did you get the question? Yeah, I think you're asking how um, the, the fact that cash is an export commodity, right? What, how does it influence um, investors? Yes. Investor yeah, right? exactly, yes. So exactly. I think, um, Definitely, given our uh, Naira dollar exchange rate right now, any any opportunity to have um, for people that deal fiscally in that space, any opportunity to have um, a foreign dominated um, investment is, is is an opportunity to take, right? So you could leverage your hedge against um, the foreign exchange risk. So I'm like. Um, we, we, so I think last year the, the transaction worth overall was about 250 million USD in terms of um, uh, exports uh, product for. Uh, so and this year, I mean, the Cashew Association is looking at doing about 500 million USD. So you can, I think, for investors, that decision, the fact that you, it's an export product, and like you should mentioned earlier, there's that high demand from all the from foreign countries for it, and Nigeria is about number six in terms of production. So. It is something you look at that it's not just local com consumption now, we're talking about foreign consumption too. And that performance, even if you're investing on COMEX, will influence the performance of the commodity on the exchange too. Okay, yeah, that's actually a good answer to the question. So, yes, um, thank you for that, Ismail. So, in the QA section, 
Philip Lawrence is asking, please, what is or um, are the indications that there would be rising price after this season is over? And are you advising participants to invest in cash yield this season? So I'm sure Yusuf is in a better place to answer that question. We can use more of the physical market. So like, 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 like we said, um, the cash flow market is a very short window market. So we would advise people, investors, to take advantage of as many opportunities they can take advantage of within the season. Once the season is over, the market is pretty much flat. Um, and there is literally no movement in prices once the season is over. So I think it's important that investors take advantage of the opportunities while they last. Um, that would just be my very important advice, piece of advice. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Yusuf. I, Philip, I hope that was able to answer your own question. I hope the question was answered well. Okay, so any, um, every other person, if you have any questions, please drop your questions in the Q&A section and we will answer it on this call. Thank you. Yes, so I have a question for Ismail. And uh, so um, everyone knows that investing in agro commodities has is like um, a good hedge to inflation. So do you also think cash share itself pro provides this opportunity to hedge against inflation for investors? Absolutely. I mean, um, and if you look at the shots, I think as at the last report, inflation is currently doing about 21%. Uh, food inflation is about 24%, right? If you take advantage of the space between now and May, you're doing um, give or take about between 11 and 14% within a three, four months period. And if you analyze that, like you should get getting about 60%, right? So um, it is a good edge against inflation, right? And that's as bad as the performance can be. If you do even 10% within that short period of time, then you definitely know you're edging yourself against annual inflation rates. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Ismail. Um, a question for Yusuf now. Um, I would ask, Is there a correlation between the international prices and farm gate prices of cashew? So we know that um, Africa contributes 60% of the volume of cashew exported globally. And then I know we know that, sorry, that Nigeria contributes to 30% of that number. So is there like a correlation between the international and the farm gate prices of, cash, of cashew? Yeah, there is a very strong cut. <laughs> Forgive me. There is a very strong correlation between those two prices. In fact, um, for the cashew, cocoa, and sesame market, the farmers, the participants in that space are quite aware of the performance in the international market, and they typically use that to price their commodities. If you want to understand this, just go to a village close to Bomosho where cashew is being harvested and you offer them a ridiculous price, they would, you'd be surprised that they will tell you that um, dollar has gone up, the international price is also at a particular level, and they will tell you all of this, and they would negotiate on that basis. So if you then come back saying that um, for whatever reason you are pushing back, they would literally just move on and sell to another person. person. So I think it's quite correlated, and um, they understand what is going on, actually. Okay, thank you very much, Yusuf. Thank you. Um, the next question, I, okay, so now I will just ask Ismail and Yusuf two, two questions each so that I, we can move to the demo and show how to actually buy this commodity on Comex, right? So um, the next question I'll be asking I think I'll ask you sort of another question now. And question is, um, so the export industry in Nigeria is has been projected to surpass Ukraine, which um, in 2021 exported about 
got about five billion dollars in exports in cashew exports, and currently Nigeria has last recorded two hundred fifty million dollars in exports. So, what do you think that we would need to improve on in Nigeria to, or even start even doing to reach our, our projection of of the numbers? Question is for you, sir. So, so favor before before I take that question, there's a question in the Q and A um, okay. from someone on the Q and A session. Um, the person asks, um, "What's the current situation at the port? Um, was What's a financier the that refused to finance cargo from Nigeria due to uncertainty? <laughs> and yeah, the conditions continue to remain not at par with what we would love to have. So it's not apps." as efficient as we would love it. But I think we are not as bad as we were a few years ago where there were trucks lined up all along the roads in Apapa. Um, so we ourselves, as an exchange, there are several export transactions that are also executed on the exchange. And then transactions have continued to happen and these exports have continued to go out of the country. So I can say that exports have improved, performance export efficiencies, Export efficiency has improved, not where we want it to be, as fast as we would love it, but then it's not as bad um, to the point where financing is absolutely not possible. Um, so I would, I just wanted to put that out so that um, we clear the air on that. Secondly, you asked what we can do to improve our performance in the international market. Um, is that correct, Favor? Sorry. Ask, yeah, Favor, you asked what we can do in Nigeria to yeah. improve our performance. Yes. So basically, it's value addition. Value addition. That's just the long and short of the cash industry. Like I said, the bulk of what we export to Vietnam and India is what we export as raw cash nuts is exported from these countries as um, cash nuts, processed cash nuts that is consumed by the by by um, consumers in North America and Europe, right? So if we can process our cashew, process it well, um, we can then export to these countries as well, as long as we meet up with their um, with their conditions. So I think it's value addition um, that we need to do in, in in Nigeria, and then I we will be able to make some gains on the cashew in the cashew industry. Yeah. Thank you, Yusuf. Uh, I would ask Ismail a question. And how do you think, I would just, the question will be, how do you think we can get more participants to invest in Cashew as some, the securitized version of Cashew? How do you think we can get more participants to do this? I think webinars like this right, um, give an opportunity to educate people. Financial literacy is very important because I know um, a lot of people are a bit risk averse to investing on um, due to advancement in technology that well maybe this is not the same as buying in the fiscal space. But once um, uh, we keep trying to educate the uh, masses, let them understand that you investing on an exchange like the COMEX is almost similar to you trading on the fiscal space, right? The advantage is that you don't have to worry about logistics and uh, you know that the positions you hold are um, quite secured, right? You don't have to, there are, there are a lot of expenses that are cut off for you. Uh, for fund managers like ourselves, we need to be more aggressive, right? And so educating um, the uh, client base, letting them see the importance of alternative investments like commodities, not just cashew. I mean, this webinar is focused on cashew, right? But other commodities like maize, right? The guys that have taken advantage of investing on the exchange over the last three years, four years, would realize that there is um, adequate, I mean, there are times that there's a downturn, but most more often than not, you see that it's always a good performance. So we need to push out a lot of financial literacy and understanding to the clients to understand that um, investing on exchange like COMEX is like you buying shares and then hoping to have um, to gain on the price performance and improvements. I think we just need to be more aggressive about that. 
Okay, thank you very much, Ismail. Um, so I will just direct one last question to Yusuf now, and then we'll go to the live demo on how to buy um, cash on the exchange. So I'm seeing a question here from Kola Abodian, and this person is asking the minimum amount to invest in cash. So I will just answer that and say, there's no minimum amount. You can buy a, a unit of cash for the price of like that unit. So it depends on what cash, on how much cash is being sold per um, unit and how much. So I, I think, yeah, yeah Fimo, let me just add to that, right? Because once you're looking at, the, that's the advantage of the, of the, um, of investing on the exchange. Because if you talk yeah. about minimum, as little as 1,000 Naira, you could buy maybe two or three different commodities, right? In comparison yeah. to trying to go to the fiscal space that you might need at least maybe a minimum of 500,000 Naira or something. So mm -hmm. it gives you, if you're talking about minimum, think about 1,000 Naira to start with, right? That's yeah. how low it is to get into the market. Yeah, correct. Yes, thank you. So Kola, I hope your question was answered. And I think the last question I would just ask for Yusuf was someone's asking, how fragmented is the market here in Nigeria in terms of production? So. So um, interesting, the, 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 the plantations we have for cashew in Nigeria are quite old, similar to what we have for cocoa. Um, you have plantations running into 15, 20 years um, in terms of age. So that means that um, some of these cheese will have to be replaced in some years to come if we, if we want to continue to be competitive. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, um, fragmentation is not really, really as um much of a problem in the in this space in terms of cash like i said um participants in this space are quite aware of what's going on if you ask an average farmer they will tell you um the element of pricing cash so they have some sense of understanding um versus some other spaces that you might be aware of they have a tangible level of understanding of these markets and they use that to price and negotiate the commodities whenever they want to sell them. So fragmentation, yes, it exists as in every other agricultural market, but then in this market, it's not as deep as you would see it in some other value chains. Okay, thank you very much, Yusuf. Thank you very much to our panelists for this, for, for everything, for answering all, all these questions. If you have further questions, please direct them to support at apexnigeria.com. That's our email. And then your questions will be answered instantly. So now we'll be moving to the live demo part. I will share my screen and I would then run through on how to buy commodities on our exchange. So I will be opening the web version of Comex. So we have um, the mobile version and the web version. So I'll be using the web version of my laptop. And to download the mobile version, kindly go to the App Store or the Play Store. So if you're using an Android phone, you go to the Play Store and search Comex by Apex. If you're using an Apple product, just go to the um, App Store and search Comex by Apex as well. So now I will be going to, I'll share my screen on the web version. Can everyone see my screen? If you can see my screen, just in the chat, you can just type in the chat box that you can see my screen. Thank you. So uh, this is a demo account. So you know, in on your own version, you just either, if you have a comics account, you can, sign in with your email and your password. If you don't, you just click on sign up and then fill in your information. So now, this is basically what the dashboard looks like in the on the web version. So here you see the overview of the market, portfolio, community, and your profile. So the first step in buying a commodity is funding your wallet. 
Yeah, that's click on fund your wallet. And then you can fund your wallet in two ways. You can either use bank transfer or you can either use um, card payment. So this account number is unique to every client. So any client that wants to fund their, their um, wallet has a unique account number displayed here. So you copy this and then you go to your bank app and you pay into the account. So the card payment version is done via pay stack and you put the amount you want to put in the wallet and then click on pay stack and then you carry on. You can also withdraw your funds. So here to show you the remaining balance you have on your account and the amount you want to withdraw your bank. So it will bring up the banks that, have, that are linked to your Comex account. And you can also add a new bank here. And then put your password and request withdrawal. So the next thing we're going to do is go to the market here. Sorry. And then here we have product view and order book. So product view, this screen here shows you how to buy or trade new commodities where you want when you want to um, buy or sell new commodities come here. And then we have different boards here. So we have the cash spot, fixed income, the OTC, the delivery spot. So the cash spot is what is peculiar to most of to our retail clients. So click on cash spot and then you see all the commodities that we have listed in the spot market. So for since it's the cashew webinar, we would buy cashew. So here you will see the current price of the commodity and click on buy. I hope it will come up now. Sorry. So this is where you see the information of what you're about to purchase. So normally you select your community here. Sorry. Sorry, um, a minute, please. Okay, sorry, my laptop is hanging right now. Okay, so we are back now. Okay, sorry for that um, interruption. So here you see the, inform um, the information and product that you're about to purchase. So uh, the currency denomination, right? It's supposed to be most currency platform, but right now we are only trading in Naira. So click on that and then your community. So if you already belong to a community, you wouldn't have this drop down to choose from other communities. Your, your own community just automatically show. And to join a community, you come to this, to the left side of the dashboard and then click on that and it leads you on joining a community. So you increase your other quantity here. That is how much, how many units you want to purchase. So maybe let's say, 200 units. And then next we would go to buy price. So the current price will be um, displayed and then you can buy within a range. They would a range. So you see here that you must enter a value between this and this. So your buying price has to be between that value for your order to go through. So I would just say 700 here. You can use the um, lower the lower amount. And then you see here all the other amounts, the brokerage fee, exchange fee, all the fees involved, and then total amount payable, and then you pay, place your order. You cannot purchase more than what is in your account. That will be flagged. So 
we will place the order now. Okay. I would have mentioned that you have a matching window period, so a period where your order is supposed to be matched. So the maximum amount of time is actually seven days. So between that seven days, your order is on the queue. And then that's the matching window. The seven days is the matching window, basically. So you place your order now and you get a notification that the order has been placed, that the order is in queue now. So immediately your order has been matched, you will get a contract note sent to your email. That's the email linked to the account that you registered with. So here in the order book, you can see all the, you can see, um, yeah, you can see other, you can see data of what has been purchased and in your portfolio, you should be able to come here to securities and see all the security that you have. So everything that you've purchased, your sports, your fixed income, anything that you have bought on the exchange will be in your portfolio. So okay, so yes, that's all for this demo. I hope it was well understood on how to buy on Comex. So I think we would, since we still have some time, I think we would just go back to the QA would attend to some questions because I've seen people have dropped more questions in the section, in the Q&A section. So, yes. So I'll stop sharing my screen now and we will go back to... Okay, so uh, let me check the question. Okay, I have a question from that I would actually direct to a smile from Samson Ido. And this person is asking, how can a starter commence trading on the exchange? So aside the tutorial that I just um, walked you guys through, I think a person is also asking how someone that's just new into investment in, in investing can like start trading and what to look out for to trade. I think that's what the person is asking. Okay, I think the, the first thing is to have that knowledge, right? Um, so in the stock market, they would advise that you always contact your stockbroker. The beautiful thing about Comex is that you have the community, right? So um, the very first thing you do when you sign up is to join a community, right? and probably engage that community, engage the host of the community so that they can give you advice as to, um, or guide you through, right? It's quite easy to, once you get the hang of it, it's quite easy to buy and sell. It's very straightforward, right? What you want to ensure is, okay, am I buying at the right price or am I selling at the right price? So you'd always need um, that com community involvement. So as, in, as a starter, right, um, once you register on the platform, either through your mobile application or on the web, join a community. I had advice to join the Marble Capital community, right? But um, join a community and engage with that, um, the community members um, or the host of that community to get in, um, insight or more knowledgeable ideas as to how to place your investments. If you're very good, also, I mean, for everything investment, not just for commodities, it's very important that you have that knowledge. So you don't you don't just jump in and without with thinking that, oh yes, I'm gonna make 20%, I'm gonna make 10%. You really need to solidify your understanding with a lot of knowledge. So do your own research, ensure that what you're buying is, um, is profitable, right? And then take that jump. Okay, thank you. I hope your question has been answered, Samson. All right, so um, Olushegon is actually directing this question particularly to Yusuf. So Yusuf, this next question is for you. So he's saying, why has Nigeria as an entity decided decide to 
sorry, this English is kind of confusing. Why has Nigeria as an entity decided to stay at the lowest ebb of the cashew value chain? It was shocking when Yusuf said we export cashew to the Asians and these people add value to it and export and export the processed stuff. Yusuf. Hello, Yusuf. Please confirm you can hear me. I can repeat the question. Maybe I should just, I should take that, right? If this is not. Yeah, yeah. yeah, please do that. All right. So I think um, like we have, with a lot of things in Nigeria, right? We need that infrastructural development, right? That's the, I mean, there's a lot of the cashew plant itself, or the, you find out that we are just dealing with only the nuts. There's the cashew apple, right? Um, once we have, and that's why investors like yourself, myself are very, important to the value chain, right? Once we can build up enough capital to develop the infrastructures within that space, right? You will be able to add more value. I think the countries that we export to, so that's what they've been able to do. They've been able to build the value um, chain and, um, and create value addition. That's, what we, that's the step we need to take. So we're not just planting and exporting. We need to be able to tap into everything that um, commodity offers, not just the nuts, the cashew apple, everything and build a value chain, uh, value added, added chain around that product. Until we get there, it's still going to be export, 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 raw materials. It's five percent of what the export is just, it's basically what you plant, right? Once you can develop it and make it um, better, then it would, would improve our chances of local consumption. Okay, thank you very much, Ismail. Um, Ushaygu Badi asked another question. As he's asking, is there any regulatory body overseeing activities of COMEX? So I'll just answer that and say, yes, COMEX is regulated by SEC, the SEC, and we're the first private um, licensed commodities exchange. So thank you. I hope that has answered your um, question. Um, person um, Kam Kamardine asking what's the benefits of joining a community. I'm sure that his smile has already shed light on that before. But in case you still need clarity, maybe a smile can still provide some um, clarity. That's the benefits of joining a community, basically. So I think, uh, like I mentioned, one the main benefit is to you need to engage your community, right? I mean, a lot of people will join, and uh, we need to see that participation because you can get in-depth knowledge of how the market is performing. Based, I mean, the, the host of the community is supposed to is presumed to have um, a bit of knowledge, right? Nobody's an island on their own. So, and because this is a this is a market, uh, this the commodities market is based on market performance, right? It's not it's not a fixed income space where you know, okay, if I put my 10 Naira, then okay, after one year, I get my 11 Naira or something. It is important to understand the market trends, right? To, um, to be able to know when it's picking up, when it's going down, right? So for that's the reason why you want to engage your community members. You want to be able to say, when do I buy? Is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to sell? What kind of value am I getting? So I believe that's the main, main reason why you should engage your community. Okay, thank you very much, Ismail. Um, Abdurazak Sulaiman is asking, is the web comex interface same as the app interface? The interface is not the same, but it's still very easy to use. The features are the same, but the interface is not the same. So I hope that has answered your question. Mm. I don't know if Yusuf is still on this call because there's a question for him, but I, let me, Yusuf, please, can you um, hear me? Can you confirm that you can hear me? Thank you. 
Sorry, I think you might be having technical issues and unfortunately we're not on the same floor. Okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Chukwebuka Asogwa is asking what's the difference in the boards? So uh, my colleague here would answer that question for you. So Stephen Tai will, will be able to answer that. So um, thank you so much, Flavor, for that question. And um, for Chukwebuka, if you look at the Comex app, probably maybe you've downloaded the Comex app, you will see the boards. There are, um, I think there are about four. We have the sports board, we have the fixed income, we have the OTC, and we have the deliverable board. But um, when in terms of peculiarity, you would understand that the fixed income and the sports board is mostly um, sort of peculiar to um, retail and the institutional investors. What I mean by that is that uh, on the sports board, you can easily buy a securitized version of those commodities. Um, and the word sport itself means um, instantly, like whatever you are buying, like you are getting a, um, um, the receipt of what you are buying um, in, your, in your email and that particular commodity will be made available in your, in your portfolio. But talking about the fixed income um, instruments, the fixed income board allows you to um, put your money or let me say invest in um, fixed income instruments. Um, and these are instruments that are um, specifically designed such that you have a guaranteed return. But then the OTC board is the over-the-counter and the um, deliverable board, I, I think, is um, exclusive to um, retail and institutional investors. So this distinguish um, these particular boards, just like you, just like you um, asked. OK. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, another question from Chukwebuka Asowa, and he's asking how do community promoters keep in contact with the community members? So, so Stephen is in charge of the promoters who answer that question. Okay, so um, thank you, Pedro. So to answer that, if you look at um, the Comex app, um, you understand that um, there's a lot of um, Comics up. So those communities are there to be to ensure that you are able to um, initiate a successful buy or sell order on the exchange. So um, the best way to um, engage anybody on the exchange, and um, if you are joining a community, you if you are very familiar with your Comex app, you understand that um, there are features there. Um, these features are deliberately um, available to to ease your um, experience in terms of um, trading. You can either use um, the chat box to, to reach out to anybody on the within the community just to um, pass across your complaints or um, to get um, further uh, um, explanation on, on what and what is going on um, within the commodities landscape. Okay. Um, Chukiruka, I hope that answers your question. Because um, Abdurazak, uh, this question that you asked is actually um, similar to what Steven just explained. So the same way you can engage your community, um, the same way he explained is also how you will engage your community leader. So basically you can chat on the um on the app on comment. You can talk to them on comment. Um okay. So I think that's we all for the questions on the Q&A section of this webinar. If you have more questions, please direct your questions to support at afxnigeria.com. We'll be available to watch, I'm sorry, to answer all these questions. And then follow us on all social media platforms at Comex by Apex, no spaces. Thank you. So we've come to the end of this, webinar, of this financial literacy session. 
and we really appreciate all of you for joining and staying up up until the end and we will be sending the recording of this to your emails the emails you used to register for the webinar hmm? and then also don't forget to download comics by effects on your apple store and on your play store and then start trading thank you very much and I would also thank our panelists again, Ismail and Yusuf. I hope that you, you were, um, I hope all our listeners were able to get their questions answered. And I hope that you will take on the answers that you've gotten today and then implement that. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for having me.